For the first example of this semester, what I'd like to look at is this problem. A uh, two kilogram grinding wheel uh, that has a seven centimeter radius um, is accelerated to its operating speed um, of 1,200 revolutions per minute uh, by a motor that applies a 0.6 newton meter torque. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to figure out how long it takes the wheel to reach the operating speed and how many revolutions it, it goes through in that time. So uh, again, you know, I'm just going to go through, the, um, through this the same way we do the grading rubric, right? Um, I want to go through, I want to identify what I know and I want to um, have a re quick representation, a um, pictorial representation of what's going on. Uh, the simplest way to do that here might be to just draw the grinding wheel, right? So it looks something like that um, with um, some speed it's going to accelerate actually not have a speed that will have the speed in the same direction as the torque around that way um, there has some radius over here and that's really all we need to um, know about this thing uh, to get going right that that's how it works um, so I've, I've got this that's nice and dandy but I'm going to need to um, sort of mathematize the problem, right? I need to turn everything into mathematics. I've got, a, I've got some words here. I want to turn it into mathematics. First thing I want to do is give all of these, ver all of these numbers um, names. Um, I, I need to name them. I need to give them uh, a variable, right? So I've got what? I've got a grinding wheel and a motor. So first I'm going to have a grinding wheel. And what do I know about the grinding wheel? Well, first I know its physical properties, right? It has a um, radius and it has a mass. I also know its initial speed, which is zero. So it's, it should be starting from rest. And I know its um, final speed or its operating speed. Uh, which is this 1200 revolutions per minute. So I'll just say that the operating speed omega is 1200 revolutions per minute. Uh, the initial speed omega i is zero, right? Um, let's see, the mass, I'll use a capital M for mass, and that is two kilograms. The radius is r is equal to seven centimeters, and um, I—that's what I know about the wheel. I also know something about the motor, and that's going to apply a torque around this axis here, around the axis of this um, of this axle. Strange how those words sound alike, isn't it? Um, and that'll have some torque of 0 0.6 Newton meters. All right. And then I want to find two things, right? I want to find A, uh, the time to reach the operating speed. And to get full credit here, again, you need to name the variable. So I'll just use capital T. And then we also have this part B, which is, uh, I want to find the number of revolutions uh, to get there, to get to that point. I'll just say to get there. Okay, and I'll give that capital N. 
as the variable name. Okay, so that, that's what I've got for setting up the problem. Um, I need to think about what sort of concept I want to use for this problem. So thinking about it, I've got this torque, so probably torque is the correct concept. How does the torque work? Right, the definition of the torque, so if we look at the equation, is going to be um, the torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the acceleration, uh, the angular acceleration. So this is very, very much like um, Newton's second law, only this is for torques, right? That's how you should look at that. So now I need more room because I'm actually going to answer it, right? I'm going to go ahead and do some of the math. We, you know, we have to do the math to answer our questions. So that, you know, that's what math is there for, is to help us answer our questions. So for part A, we've, we're gonna start with step one, um, which is to find this number, find the moment of inertia. Okay. And, you know, I'm just going to look up that formula. And if I look up that formula, it is um, I is equal to one half mr squared. Okay, because it's a solid because this is a solid disk. All right. Okay, so that's equal to one half times two kilograms. Right times um, 0 0.07 um, meters squared. I just did the conversion there. Uh, because I'm running out of room, uh, these guys, these two cancel. Uh, I square seven, that's um, 49. I have one, two, three, four, all the way to the back, so that's 0, 0, 0,049, right? And that is the moment of inertia. I still have a kilogram, and I still have a square meter. So it's kilograms meters squared. That's that's what you need for your moment of inertia. Okay, so that's the first step. So I figure out what that is. Um, the second step is to find the angular acceleration. Okay, so this is alpha is equal to tau over i, right? And I'm given tau. Tau is the um, torque, 0 0.6 newtons times meters. And I just calculated i, which is 0 0.0049 kilogram meters squared, right? And if I go ahead and type that into my calculator, um, I'm going to find out that this is 122 um, radians um, per second squared. That's, that's how fast the angle, the angular motion, the rotation, that's how fast that's accelerating. So we come back here, line feed, right? Um, now we want to find the time, right? We want to actually answer the problem. We know this angular acceleration. Um, we should be able to use that um, because it's constant, right? Since that's constant, we should be able to find that with angular kinematics. So we want to find the time. And remember, the angular kinematics is just like the um, linear kinematics, only you have to... Uh, use angle, angular quantities instead of linear quantities. It's, but otherwise, it's exactly the same. So this is like V equals AT, um, or delta V equals AT. So the um, final, uh, the final um, operating speed is equal to um, the angular acceleration times time, right? Um, but what we want is the time, right? And so the time is equal to, 
omega over alpha. So this is one over second, this is radians per second, this is radians per second squared, that should end up being seconds. So that's, a, that's sort of a good formula for that. Um, so when I do that, I say, okay, my final operating speed is this 1200 revolutions per minute. Right, and then um, my alpha here, I just said that's 122 radians per second squared. We've got minutes, revolutions, radians, seconds. These things are not, these numbers don't really like each other. They're, they're in different units, so I'm going to have to convert these. Um, I want to turn the revolutions, so for one revolution, I have 2 pi radians, right, Cause, because 2 pi gets you all the way around the circle, which is one revolution, and I want to counteract that minute and turn it into some seconds, uh, so one minute is 60 seconds, right, uh, fairly straightforward. Now we just, um, uh, I think I'll have to come down here. Um, now we just type all that in and we get 1.03 seconds. So it basically takes one second to speed up, which is probably what you expect. I mean, if you've, you've used a Dremel tool, I'm sure, you, you just turn it on and it, uh, in almost no time it gets up to its um, operating speed. Um, although I don't think the um, little heads on the Dremel tool or two kilograms. So, I mean, it just happens really, really fast. And so we've solved part A. So now we're down to part B. And that looks like it's way down at the end of the page, so I have to push it up a little bit more, right? Um, so for part B, we want to find um, the number of turns. First thing we'll have to do is find the amount of the number of radians, the amount of angle that's that's displaced, right? So find um, angular displacement. Okay, and again, we'll use kinematics. So. Uh, theta at time t is going to be equal to omega naught or the omega i, which is zero, the beginning speed times t. We don't care about that. Plus one half alpha t squared. Again, we don't have that first term because the um, it starts off at it starts off at rest. So now I've got one half times this alpha which I've already said is 122 radians per second squared times 1.03 seconds squared, right? Uh, which means that, you know, we cancel these seconds, we have radians left. We're going to go through about half that number um, in, uh, I'm going to go through about half that number time, plus a little bit to get there, let's see, that would be 64.7 radians. R A O went off. Okay, well, things happen. We'll, we'll live with that one. So, but now we're in radians, right? We're still in radians. We want to get to the number of revolutions now. So, we have to do our conversion. Okay, and so that's just saying theta is equal to this 64.7 revolutions divided by um, 2 pi, or 1 revolution, what? Which is, you know, this is 6.7 radians. I'm getting myself confused right at the end, of course. Um, so 2 pi radians um, per revolution. Okay, so we do a little bit of um, calculator work and that is 10.3 revolutions. 
nice and simple. Um, nothing to um, really worry about. A small number. So that's probably good. I mean, we, that's sort of what we expect. Um, and talking about what we expect, well, we have to do a check, right? So the last part on the grading rubric is doing a check. Um, and the check is just a reasonableness test, right? So reasonableness, one thing we said was good for reason, being reasonable is checking your units. So I kept all my units so I can check my units. It's the easiest way to do it. So um, first we have time is in, what is that, in seconds? Uh, which is the correct unit for time. And, uh, okay. actually I wanted to call it N, didn't I? So anyways, uh, and the number of revolutions is in revolutions. It's a pure number. And so that's good. That's what we wanted to find out. Um, so they're in the right, um, they have the right units. So that's that says that at least the unity part I did right. Right. That doesn't mean I did the conversions right. Um, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't mean that I um, didn't make any math errors, but it means that, um, everything that I've done gets me to something that looks right. Looking right is a, a really good a good way to think that, to, a really good reason to believe that is right, right? But you have to know what looking right looks like for that to be true, right? You can't just say, say things. So, you, you know, what I don't want you to do for this answer, what, for, for the check is to say, oh, I did all of these steps right. So I don't care if you did all the steps right. I'm assuming that you did all this. I'm assuming that you followed the procedure. But when you, after you followed the procedure, you want to see, um, see if you get the right um, number. Now, if you get the, or if you get an unreasonable number, right, if this is in um, bananas instead of revolutions, then you may have, you, there are two problems, there are two possible problems. One, you did the math wrong. That's the most likely, right? Um, so you can scan that and make sure that you didn't make any obvious screw-ups there. And the other one is you used the wrong principle for the problem and, and you ended up getting something else, right? Um, a lot of times you'll end up getting a different kind of time, right? The, you'll find that out in the next, um, in the next unit, when we're doing waves, there are period. There, you know, you have a period, um, and you have different, um, different. You just have different times that you can be worried about with the different, um, you, you know, for for different questions, right? So, um, you know, you could be using the wrong concept, but in this case, this looks right, and on top of that the um, number of revolutions to begin it is uh, small and not unreasonable. So it's not too big and it's not too small. So that doesn't mean it's right, but it means it's probably right. And all we care about here is if it's probably right. You know, um, we could work the um, problem in a completely separate way, but I'd need a lot more room, right? And, you know, I just want you to get a good feel about these things. So that's about it for this one. Um, I think it looks pretty good. I think it'll help you a lot. And I will see you in class.